This is the solution to quiz number two for ECE 320 Electronics. The first question asks, how come there's this 0.7 volt drop across silicon, across silicon diodes? Uh, a couple ways to explain that. One, there's a potential energy barrier and across the PN junction. That barrier has to be overcome in order to get current to flow. For silicon, that's roughly 0.7 volts. So as current flows, I lose that much voltage as I go across the diode. Another explanation is there's a depletion region between the P and the N junction. The depletion region stops current flow. If I apply voltage P to N, I can shrink that down to zero. When you get to zero, then you get current flow. And zero happens at about 0.7 volts for silicon. Part B is why does the voltage drop across the silicon diode as the temperature goes up? Again, a couple ways to explain that. Uh, one explanation is you've got that depletion zone. As they get more and more thermal electrons, the thermal electrons start to fill in that depletion zone and it gets smaller and smaller. So you need, voltage, you need less voltage to get rid of it. Another explanation is the depletion zone comes because you have N-type and P-type semiconductors side by side. As you get more thermal electrons, the doping matters less and less. Uh, eventually, if the doping doesn't matter at all, I no longer have any voltage across the diode. So as temperature goes up, I get closer and closer to zero volts. Problem two is calculations. If I have a thermistor and a measure of 5 volts, or 3.5 volts across it, what's the resistance? What's the temperature? To find the resistance, I use voltage division. The voltage is R1 over R1 plus R2 times 10 volts. Solving backwards, it'll be V1 over 10 minus V1 times 1,000. That's a little bit of algebra to get there. Gives you 538.46 ohms. If I then plug into the thermistor equation, and solve for T, I get 290.816 Kelvin, or 17 degrees Celsius. Meaning that with the circuit, I can measure temperature if I can measure voltage. Third problem is a graphical solution. Here's a diode. This is actually probably a red LED. It takes about two volts to turn it on. If I give it this circuit, five volts and 60 ohms, what's the current, what's the voltage across the diode? To do that, I draw the load line. If there is no current on the x-axis, I have 5 volts across the diode. If I short the diode, make it 0 volts, I'll have 5 volts across 60 ohms, 83.3 milliamps. So two points defines a line. That's the load line. Where the load line crosses your curve is your solution. This will be right around 50 milliamps, 48 milliamps, 2.1 volts. Problem number four is Write the nonlinear equations for this circuit. Don't have to solve. You need MATLAB to solve. And for a quiz, I don't assume you have MATLAB. Uh, quite a few people did solve in MATLAB just to show off, but that wasn't required. Uh, first off, I'll write the diode equations. The voltage drop across the diode is from here, where VD is the voltage across the diode. For diode 1, the voltage is V1 minus V2, so plug that in. Diode 2, it's 0 minus V2. Again, direction matters per diode. Diode 3, it's V3 minus 0. Gives you three diode equations. Then your voltage node equations. Current left, V1 minus 10 over 100, plus a current down, plus ID1, plus a current down, V1 minus V3 over 500, equals 0. And node 2, minus ID1, plus ID2, plus V2 over 1000, equals 0. Node 3, V3 minus V1 over 500, plus ID3, equals 0 gives you six equations, six unknowns. Problem five, uh, what a lot of people did is they took their equations from number four, threw them in MATLAB and solved. That's the nonlinear uh, solution. With an ideal diode solution, I can solve almost by inspection. So given the circuit, I've got 10 volts trying to push current down. Probably diode one is on, probably diode three is on, and diode two is off. If diode two is off, I know ID two is zero. If diode 1 is on, I know that V1 minus V2 is 0.7, and I know that V3 is 0.7. So really just have one unknown, V1. So writing my one equation for one unknown gives you V1 minus 10 over 100 plus V1 minus 0.7 over 1,000 plus V1 minus 0.7 over 500 equals 0. Solving, I get V1 is 7.85 volts. 
want to know V1. I know V2 is V1 minus 0.7. V3 is just 0.7. Then the current. Uh, I don't know this current, but I do know the current through the 1,000 ohms. V2 over 1,000 is ID1, so that's 7.15 milliamps. And then V1 minus V3 over 500 is ID3, 14 milliamps. And that kind of makes sense. By current division, I've got 1,000 ohms in this path, 500 ohms in this path. ID3 will be twice ID1. And that's what we're seeing. And problem number six. Here's kind of a thought problem. Uh, one of these is going to be on. If these diodes are on, the three of them, I'll have 2.1 volts. But 2.1 volts is too much. That'll turn on these two diodes and eclipse that at 1.4 volts. But 1.4 is too much. That'll turn on diode 3 and clip it at 0.7. So the voltage here at V1, it can't be 2.1 and 1.4 and 0.7. It's going to be something. It turns out the smallest voltage wins. So V1 is going to be 0.7. That's not enough to turn on these two diodes, they're off, I2 is 0. 0.7 is not enough to turn on three diodes, I1 is 0. I just have a single diode and a resistor. If this is 0.7, I've got 10 minus 0.7 over 100, gives you 93 milliamps flowing in. If 93 milliamps flow in, 93 milliamps flow out. I4 is 7 milliamps, so the remainder is I3, 86 milliamps. And the bonus question, uh, this is, if A equals B equals 1, I've got 1 equals 1, that's okay. Subtract 1 on both sides, I have 1 minus 1 equals 1 minus 1, that works. Factor it, 1 times 0 is 2 times 0, that's okay. I can't cancel the zeros though. If I do, I get 1 equals 2. That just says you can't divide by 0. And that's quiz number 2 for ECE 320.